Did you know that studies have shown that playing Tetris has curbed drug, food, and sex cravings? You're listening to the Xbox Hub podcast, the official podcast of the XboxHub.com. For the latest Xbox news, reviews, videos, and opinions, make sure you visit the XboxHub.com. But for now, settle down, get comfy, and open your ears for some podcast delights. Hello and welcome to the Xbox Hub official podcast, episode 159. My name is Gareth Bryan. I'm going to be your host. On my virtual left is Mr. Neil Watson. How are you doing, Neil? Hello, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very good. And my virtual right is Mr. Paul Renshaw. How are you doing, Paul? I'm doing all right, Gareth. Feeling <laughs> like part of the furniture now. I think I've been on this for an unbroken streak. No. So, uh, yeah, I'm quite enjoying myself. So Good, well, that's good. Great to be here. I hope you're okay too. Oh, very nice. I like this. Um, we've got no virtual opposite today, just the three of us. Just the three of us. That's not the song, is it? It's just the two of us. Um, we well, we can kick Paul off. Three of us should, we, in London, should we kick yeah. Paul off, shall we? <laughs> yeah. We'll have just Listen, the two of us then. I've got all the fishing stories ready, so oh. you don't need to kick oh, me off. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, um, let's talk about weeks. What we've been doing this week. Neil, what's your week been like? Uh, busy with work, basically. Um, I'm trying to get back into cycling work has just been so mad that i haven't had a chance to to ride as much as i wanted to yeah. um i went from a couple of years ago i was i was uh, like paul actually I was, I was on a streak of riding every single day for basically a year and then covid kicked in and then the flu kicked in and i just haven't got back into it yeah so um so i'm trying to get back into it indoors and outdoors on the old swift as well had a little race today for half an hour nearly killed myself um but yeah, other than that, just work. Okay. Yeah. All right. What about you, Paul? Uh, well, this week, or this weekend rather, saw the culmination of the uh, the Wi-Fi dramas at work. I uh, managed to finally get the new system in and up and working. And I was expecting a rapturous kind of hero's welcome. Um, instead of which, the bosses at work have all sodded off to Disneyland. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just feeling a little <laughs> undervalued at the moment. Oh, so, anyway. Oh. Are we, uh, they didn't, le- didn't leave you a blank check or anything like that, no? Just, no, no, no. I did kind of, He rang me on the Monday to find out how it had gone. And I did sort of say, I'll be putting in for a pay rise after this, after the stress of this thing. And he kind of laughed nervously and then uh, left it. So... I don't know if that's gone in. I don't know if I've planted a seed or not. We'll have to wait and see. Wow. Okay. Um, well, at least we don't have to hear about it anymore, April. No, it's done. Um, I will <laughs> never mention Wi-Fi or scissor lifts or anything ever again. We're going to upset a lot of scissor lift fans and cabling fans. Yeah, we've yeah, got um, some of them. Yeah. <laughs> I must admit, I'm a scissor lift fan now after using one for a week, but... Uh, yeah, yeah but don't fall out of them, kids. No, it's not a good, no. not a good thing. Um, good. What have I done this week? I've been, I've been to theatre twice this last week. What about that? I've been for a while. Uh, um, that's very good because I've never been to the theatre. <laughs> there you go. So I've seen two theatre shows. One was, um, one was a very kind of low key thing, and one was a huge extravaganza with projection and everything. But the funny thing is, the weirdest thing, me and a colleague. We're walking along in London, which is Paul's nemesis, and we were in Piccadilly Circus. So we're walking across. And got stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> we were walking in Piccadilly Circus, and I went, um, "Do you know what? Let's go. Let's walk towards the bush. We'll walk towards the bush theatre, which is in Shepherd's Bush, and it was raining with it. So let's get far. We're getting there. It's nice. It was nice being in London at night. We walked a little bit further, and then we there's a place in Piccadilly, which is a road off Piccadilly Circus, if you know that. And there's a massive water stones there, huge water stones, like one of the, it's beautiful. And I said to her, I said to my friend, I said, do you know what? There used to be a bar up there. And I haven't been to that bar since about 1998, but I wonder if it's still there. And they said, we've got five minutes, let's go and have a look. So we went in the lift and we went up to the sixth floor, beautiful views of London, got into the bar and I walked out and there was a friend there who I hadn't seen since 1999. Wow. In, in the water stage. What's that? That's a coincidence. 
uh, and they've been in the bar ever yeah, since. Yeah, ever since. That's what I said. <laughs> Have you been here all the time? Yeah. That's a good. That's a good coincidence, isn't it? And it was just off an offshoot, and they now I've seen them. I haven't seen them for a long time. Very nice. Yeah, so. I, I think that raises a question. Though. Hmm. If you've not seen somebody for twenty-four years, are they still a friend? Well, that's a good point. That's a very good point. Uh, are they? Do they get downgraded to an acquaintance? Yeah. I mean, it's the same with family. I haven't seen some members of my family since eight, nine, eight, four. Are they still? Yeah, my... but that. That's... Not everybody wants to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. I'd rather see my friends. In the family. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Your friends are your family. What about that? Okay, we're going to go on to games. <laughs> I think we're getting onto some kind of poster, yeah. motivational poster stuff here. Aren't exactly. We? So. Yeah. Um, let's talk about games. Um, how we've been playing, what we've been playing. Let's start with Neil. What have you been playing, first of all? Um, I have been playing a bit of Forza Horizon 5, unsurprisingly. And to be honest, that's pretty much all I've been playing because I just haven't had the time. Um, but I've also been sent. Yeah, our friends at Thrustmaster, I know that you um, liked it last time that I brought Thrustmaster up on the podcast, so mm. we're bringing them up again, um, have sent me the latest Forza Horizon themed controller, which is their eSwap XR Pro controller for Xbox. Um, so obviously I had to test it out with Forza um, and with F1, because the thing with this controller is it's modular, so you can take out thumbsticks and you can take out D-pads, literally take them out, just pop them off. Um, they're held in place with magnets and slot another one in there. So we we reviewed the the eSwap kind of, I think it was end of last year, liked it as a controller, it was really good. And then with this Forza edition, which comes out today as we are recording um, in anticipation for Spoiler alert, the rally adventure that's coming later on. Um, it's this Forza Edition controller with a, a little racing steering wheel. So you stick this steering wheel in place of your D-pad or in place of your left thumbstick, and you use that to drive. What do we think? Good? What do you mean? That's what do you mean? Like, like, a, a, dreadful what, idea. like a normal steering wheel? What, what, what it's is... a teeny tiny little steering wheel. Like a little... About a bit bigger than a 50p piece. So like you're doing it with just your, your thumb and your finger? Just with your thumb, yeah. Cool. It's got notches all the way around the wheel, so you, you don't slip off. Um, and because this, this controller is modular, you can take out the D-pad, just pop it out within a second, right. pop this racing wheel in, and then when you're in Forza or F1 or whatever, you use that to, to steer. Well, I'm going to have to go to Paul, because Paul's, uh, Paul's a drive. What that... do you think, Paul? I think that sounds awful. <laughs> how um, how is the calibration? I mean, because obviously you've you've got it's a proper analog stick. Is it an analog steering wheel? It it's it's spring loaded, so it pops back. It's got uh, ninety five degrees of movement, so it pops back quite quickly. So you're not going to sit there. I put in my review actually that's just gone live today. You're not going to sit there like a London cabbie spinning it round. None mm-hmm. of that business. Um, but. I wasn't sure myself. I thought it was a bit of a gimmick. Using it, it's really quite good. Whether I would use it all the time over a thumbstick, I don't know. But instead of a D-pad, it's a million times better. Oh, okay. Mm. Interesting. So you like it, Neil? You're a big fan? Yeah, I like it, yeah. I I thought I'd use it on F1 as well. Okay, it's, it's Forza liveried. It's white, black pink it's got the horizon logo all over it it looks really smart actually okay um but i used it on f1 just because i knew i could go into the time trial section follow my ghosts that i was doing previously with a normal controller or with a proper steering wheel i've got a couple of proper wheels as well just to see if i could keep up it took me three laps but i was pretty much with this little mini steering wheel pretty much on it oh. after three laps so, so it definitely works. Okay, good. Well, Paul's not yeah. convinced. He might be convinced. Oh, I, I'm not convinced. Maybe you should send it up to me, Neil, and I'll have a go. Okay, you come and get it, Paul. And then you come <laughs> go. I'll see you in an hour. Good. <laughs> um, Paul, what have you got? What's your? Have you got a game? Um, I have. I have two games. Ooh, in fact, wow. just in case we uh, we've got 
extra time. Um, the first game that I'm going to talk about is a little one called Rooftop Renegade. Now, one of the other reviewers on the site who shall remain nameless. Um, <laughs> <laughs> lost, they lost Neil. Is he right? That's, that's, oh. a nasty, that's a nasty cough you've got there, Neil. Yeah. Anyway, oh. one, one of these other reviewers um, took this game on and then discovered that they didn't have time to play it, so it's ended up in my lap. Right. Um, madness. Absolute basically, madness. Basically, it's it's a it's a nice little kind of running game. Think Mirror's Edge, but think 2D and viewed from the side rather than a first-person perspective. You're supposed to run through um, the... uh, You're supposed to run through all these rooftops, collecting all these crystals and keeping them out of the hands of the bad guys. Um, So, yeah, basically you slide and jump and boost and you're on jet um, sort of inline skate things and... It's 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 okay. It's not going to set the world on fire, but uh, it's quite good fun. I'm enjoying it so far. So keep your eyes out for an upcoming review. Great. Um, well, I have got. I talked about this game last week, didn't I? Did I talk about it a little bit? Deceive Inc. I think I might have just said to you, I've played an hour of it, and that's what yes, it was. Yes, you did. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest. When I when I got this game, it didn't inspire. I was like, oh, another multiplayer game. You know, only. And what's it going to be like? I was a bit sort of like, you know, when you load it up, I wasn't too enthusiastic. Now, I've played a lot of it now, and it's got, it's really addictive. It's really good. <laughs> it's good. It's, it's the idea, again, I'm going to say, if no one's played it, you play a spy, and you go into an area, and you've got a number of objectives, and the objectives are you've got to kind of like get rid of three locks that say, that opens up a laboratory. Um, in these different places, and you have to go into this laboratory, nick a special package, grab the package, and then escape, right? Get out of there. Get out of there. And the the things you've got you can do is you can disguise yourself. You can disguise yourself as NPCs walking around like a civilian to get into other areas that are a thing. You need to disguise yourself as a guard. Um, To get into the final area, you need to disguise yourself as a, a lab technician, for example. Um, but but the good thing about this is the the key thing, which I think I said last week, is that you've got um, I think it's like eight other um, online players doing the same thing. And if one of you, if one of them catches you, or one of them decides, oh hold on, that person's one of us, they can kill you. And right at the end, when you get the package, it's like a free fall. Everyone knows someone's got the package, and everyone's trying to kill each other. A bit like. Um, uh, the dark zone in <laughs> division when you're all waiting for the extraction and everyone's looking at each other so um it's really good i've really enjoyed myself and i haven't enjoyed myself on one of these games for a long time maybe i was, I was sort of saying in the review at the moment when i first played overwatch i think i was playing that again and again and again i was really into that i don't know how and the servers are okay they're holding up in the, in the first week it seems to be quite busy it, it's there's something very interesting about how tense it is because you can't work out who the who the people are? So you might just stop and just look over there. And someone's, but sometimes the NPC characters just act weird anyway. They might glitch for a bit, for example. And you're thinking, oh, is that right. a character? Are they doing some purpose? Like if you start running, you know that something's going. You know that. But then some of the NPCs run to confuse you. If someone jumps, you know that's the person. There's great moments when you're sort of like in the sort of like near the safe area, or like the area when you have to pick up a package, and there's. There's some NPCs in. You're just staring. I've stared at someone for ages, and they were staring at me. And then almost simultaneously, both of us pulled the guns out. <laughs> it was a really <laughs> nice moment. And it, it's one of those games that kind of make you smile as well. You know, you, you don't mind, you know, dying. You die so many, you know, it's quite a fun thing to do. And, and you progress, you level up, you get more kind of like Overwatch, you get little loot boxes, you open that, that are costumes and stuff, you know. And uh, I think. They've got season plans. You can see the stuff that's not really there that they want to carry on. And, and the maps are good. Yeah, it's good. I really enjoyed it. I mean, we'll see what it's like in a few months' time to see what it's, if people are still getting it, if it sells well. Uh, that's the main thing with yeah, it, isn't it? Yeah. I remember when it came out and I was doing the launch task, I was thinking, oh, this sounds quite interesting. But I wonder how many people are going to be playing it. Yeah. Um, good. But it's good to hear that it's um, thriving at the moment. Then. Yeah, there's no problems at the moment. Yeah, and it's there's something unique, something a bit different. You know, it borrows a little bit from lots of different things, but it really feels, yeah, it feels fun. It feels very much fun. Um, 
Good. Let's go to Neil. Have you got another game? What have you got? Um, I haven't really got much unless I can sit here and talk about VR for oh, five minutes. You, st- you still loving VR? I do like VR. Uh, PSVR too, yeah. yeah. I do like it. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as much as that. <laughs> No, I, I do like it. I, I don't. I still don't think it's needed on Xbox or anything like that. But I've had some good times with uh, Grand Turismo Seven. Hmm. I've kind of been pretty wowed by that. Actually, it was one of those. Oh, this is a bit good. This is very clever. Um, I've been playing Drums Rock, which I think was on the original PSVR, possibly. Um, but that's really good. I just wish it had um, officially licensed tracks because they're a bit. You've got kind of. Um, you got Black Betty and you've got Evanescence, but they're not the real songs. So that's it's a little bit disappointing. It would be nice if there were some proper bands in there. Um, but that works nice. I like I like that. Uh, what else have I been playing? A bit of um, the old kayaking still. It's still there. Uh, I, I've come to the realisation that kayaking isn't a system seller. <laughs> so uh, you'll, you'll be pleased to hear. Your um, predictions wrong then, because you I were know, saying that was yeah. going to be the one. Yeah, um, oh. but I do think the jigsaw puzzles. Um, I can't think of the name of the game, puzzling whatever it's called, something or other. That is a system seller. <laughs> so much so that I bought DLC packs for that. It's really, really good. It's, it's so, I, I, it's so clever. On. Hang on. Yes, you Paul. spent 500 and some quid to, mm. to do a jigsaw. You do realise that you could go and buy an actual jigsaw oh, for like but, a tenner. But but no, this is better than an actual jigsaw. This is really clever. Is it yeah. system stellar clever, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd go that far. <laughs> 3, 3D, 3D modelling jigsaws, pick them up, pick up a piece spin it round in your hand, have a look at it, join it with another piece. Oh, yeah, I'll have that bit over there as well. I'll grab that bit in, put them all together, put them in your face, basically, so you can see all the contours and whatnot. It, it's really, really good. So, like I say, so much so that I've bought some DLC packs as well. So, um, oh, you heard it here yeah, first. That is good. Fascinating. What's the name of that game? <clears throat> uh, jig, jigsaws. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can't no, 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 I've got it. I've got it. Puzzling places ah. on uh, PSVR two. Yeah, very, very good. So, but, if you're thinking about just buying, keep, keep away from the thousand piece ones because that's enough to oh. do your head in. Wow. Okay. My goodness. So, if you think about buying your PSVR two, that's your system seller. That's the game. You pick yeah. up your jig stars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't buy GT seven. Well, buy GT seven because that's clever as well. Okay. Don't buy Horizon. Wow. That's just too much climbing. Yeah. It is it, it, again, it's very clever, but it is a lot of climbing involved. Yeah, it's a lot of climbing. I've heard it's a lot of climbing. Um yeah. good. Okay, well hopefully you get some more games soon that we all come back and tell us about. I, I've bought all the games, so I just don't <laughs> know, time to play them. <laughs> okay, good. Paul, what have you been playing? Something fun? Well, I haven't been playing jigsaws in VR, so Yes, so anything's got to be better than that. Um, the l- next game I'll talk about is another little one called Guns and Runs. Um, and basically, the name of the game tells you exactly what the game is about. You shoot things and you run about. And that's pretty much it. It's a side-on, pixel art, retro-styled action platformer um you dash about jump about um shoot all the baddies and then come across a boss die horribly swear a lot and then um do it all again so yeah there you go it's quite good fun i've the reviews i think the reviews in the edit list so when neil gets his finger out and sorts it out um it should be on the site reasonably soon Okay, guns reasonably and soon. reasonably soon. Guns and runs. Guns and runs. It's it's not it, it's un. It's not and. It's un. Oh, sorry. It's just an just a n. Guns and runs, and it's a capital N for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, my final game I'm going to chat about is a game called Not for Broadcast. Uh, have you heard of this, you two? Yes. No. 
Yeah, for do up Neil has. Um not for broadcast is um it was that came out on Steam of two thousand and maybe a couple of years ago. And it's a FMV game, full motion video game. And the idea is is you're a cleaner, first of all, at a at a TV station, like a news station, right? And the the person who's the production behind the cameras doing all the vision mixes it decides to go off and get drunk and says you're in charge. And so basically your job is is to um vision mix and and be the person in the uh T V studio using the multi cameras, almost directing the, the news show. So what you're faced with is and it's 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 it was made for VR as well, so which kind of works, but it's it's fine on the thing. So your face with your face with four kind of monitors, your face with a little thing underneath, which is where you put you load your adverts in for the breaks. On the right you've got the telephone, and on the on the left you've got the sort of like um the power that you have to power everything up. And what happens is when a broadcast starts, is you've got to cut between the cameras. First of all, so you'll see your four monitors and you see one big monitor that is the broadcast, what's being broadcast. And so if someone's speaking, for example, on TV uh, number one, you need to have that's the one you need to broadcast. And then if TV number one goes, what do you think about that? And goes to TV number two is a different person. Then you're cut into that camera. So you're cutting between the different cameras and the different shots. That makes sense? Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so then you're doing a half an hour to a 40 minute broadcast and the news program has different items um and then there's other elements that come into play like there's a censor button <laughs> when people start to swear so you have to censor quickly before it gets broadcast because there's like a two second delay between what you're hearing and what's getting broadcast so you have to do that like a tv studio um there's um like an audio mix so you're sort of mixing audio um and like I said, you've got different adverts, so you have to put the adverts in at the right price title sequences. Now it sounds very um, hard, doesn't it? And very, it's kind of it, it's quite it's simpler than it, than I'm, I'm talking about. But what what they've got as well is they've got this huge narrative that's going through, which is about this this um, political party called Advance. That's the first one. Advance are like this kind of like new political party that won the general election, and Advance are this kind of like they're changing everything they're they're taxing the rich the rich make getting all their assets and then moving them <laughs> into sort of like lower accommodation who are revolting but then they're doing things like setting up um, um um hospitals where you can go and kill yourself when you're too old to get rid of the weight there's a kind of like a political story going on there there's another little narrative there that's anything about some um you know like little um toys that you make that talk these ones have suddenly all gone on a on a, they've all gone wrong the mechanics, so they're going around the streets like, like to, a Five Nights at Freddy's. Type yeah, thing. and they're trying to kill people, yeah. so everyone has to go into lockdown. So there's some broadcast, and this happens over like a year. This thing, and then you've got your story, your personal story, which is told through little cutscenes in between the broadcast, where you're um, having to deal with your family, your your health, your brother who's rich and has to take his. So you're making choices as well. There's a lot going on, but. but it's very funny. They do. For example, there's a great um, element when they, these protests, you're, you're um, doing a broadcast of a sports tournament. It's a made-up sports to- tournament. I can't remember what it's called, like a game that these two people are playing. But there's, um, there's streakers, and they're literally are streakers that come into the game. <laughs> and you have to never cut. You've got to cut between the cameras so you never see the streakers. And, of course, they're moving between all four cameras and four shots. But that oh, happens I do it the other way around. It's much more fun. I know. I know. Well, you, you see it all. <laughs> and there's a great bit of, there's a terrible, brilliant thing when it, a, the, a sort of like um, a school theatre company do a sort of like play about poverty and it, it's, it, and there's a song and a rap. It's terrible. It's meant to be terrible. And that you've got to edit to the rhythm of the, of the song. Things like that. So they, they're always changing it up. It's really good. I, I It's really engaging. It's making me laugh a lot, which is a good thing. Uh, mm. And it's inventive. I don't think I've ever just taken that full motion video stuff because normally with full motion video stuff, you're just sort of making choices to go left or right or do this or do that. This is much more. And it'd be great in VR, but it's much more. There's so many it, more it's, different. It's in VR, isn't it? Yeah, it is VR. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. in VR, and it's also, I believe, a Guinness World Record holder for the most 
hours of FMV in a video right. game. And the number of actors they've used as well. It's amazing. I think it's like 148 actors they've used. So yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's very good. It's really impressive. I'm really enjoying myself. I'm sort of, they're in this package, you've got the main campaign. You've got um, two DLCs as well to go with it. Um, like a spooky one and a sort of like telephone one and then you've also you, you can when you finish a broadcast you get graded but then you can go back and watch the rushes of your edit as well if you want to so that's mm -hmm. quite good as well so it keeps that as well so it's, it's clever it's really clever British company a uh, little British company has set up self in 2013 and made it it's great yeah there we go it, it came out it came out on Steam a couple of years ago didn't it yeah it did so, it did it did I, do, does that notice at all or not no no, it could be okay. sort of now, I think, yeah. Especially with the lockdown stuff as well, yeah. No, it's 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 really good. Very good. I mean, um, I'm good. just wondering if I missed some kind of memo since you two seem to be really well informed about this game and I've never even heard of it. Well, you've been messing around with Scissor Lists. Oh, yeah. that's true. It's yeah, your own fault. Yeah. yeah, sorry. What was I thinking? Um, do you think somebody <laughs> would like this game who wasn't some kind of lovey down in London? <laughs> If you like full motion video games, you've definitely got to play this. Right. Well, I don't. Well, there you go. So, it's, it really pushes it to a different level. So it's, it's, there hasn't it's been good. a good full motion video game since Pit Fighter in the arcades in about 1990. <laughs> I'm going to argue with that. <laughs> we know Have you played them all? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Every single one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That was attractive. We're going to be on the phone. Yeah. That's then, that's then gone from our thing. Um, and I'm, just, I'm going to brief, before we briefly just mention I started um, Resident Evil 4 Remake, which I did. I've done about a couple of hours. It's really good yeah. for me because I can't remember playing it originally. <laughs> so, so it's like everything's a surprise. Ooh. Ooh. Go, yeah. <laughs> What's this? So I don't. I've got. I've got and no. Is it as good as everyone's saying? Yeah, it's like the Dead Space thing. It looks great. It's a different way of. Yeah, it's, it's really good. I mean, it's, if you're Resident Evil again. You're going to have a lot of fun with it. And it does look good. It feels good in those remakes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, the game, you know, even though I don't remember it, the game was a very good game anyway, you know, beforehand. So it's. Yeah, yeah. Can I just say, Darren did an article um, maybe two or three weeks ago, put it up on site saying how good the. Was it the beta? No, it was a demo, mm, wasn't it? A mm, demo it of Resident 4 yeah. was. And before that, he did one about how it was the greatest game of all time or something like that. Um, so, yes, yeah, so, and he's reviewing it for us, isn't he? Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, it's good. Very would, good. Would it be good for somebody who's only ever played the original Resident Evil on PS1, maybe? Is that when it came out? And Resident Evil 5, I think. Well, I, I think, think they're the only yeah. ones I've ever played. I think Resident Evil 5 is the worst one. Um, yeah. But I would, this is my recommendation to you, I'd play the Resi 2 remake that came out a couple of years ago, which is very good. Yeah. So have a go at that, see if you like that, because it's in the same. Um, yeah, I would do, do that one first. And then mm. do Resi yeah. 7. Resi 7 is on Game Pass. I, I played all of two minutes of that. Oh, there you go. No. Well, if you're not into that. It's probably not something for somebody who doesn't have any time to play games, though, I would have thought. No, that's you, a good point. you do need yeah. to put a bit of time in. Oh. Right, let's talk about some news. Now, the Future Games Show, we talked about it last week. That uh, that came on the last Thursday night, so we missed it. Um, let's have a little chat about just a couple of things we maybe liked from there. Um, Neil, did you have a chance to have a look at it? I know you come on quite late to this. Uh, no, no, you could have given me a week to watch it. I wouldn't have watched it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> It was Excellent. So it was just me and you then, Gareth. Just me, us two then. <laughs> um, Paul, what was, what was the first game that caught your fancy? Um, the first one I liked was called The Miasma Chronicles. Um, and it was kind of a... It was made by the same people who did... Do you remember Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did. I yeah, reviewed that. It's by the, yeah, it was, it's very good. I enjoyed that when I played it. And it's by the same people who made that. And it's in the same style. So it looks like it's going to be an interesting kind of strategy game um, where you can sneak up on people and do stuff. And you've got a glove that gives you sort of powers and things. Mm. Um, but, yeah, it looked um, very interesting. I was uh, I was quite pleased to see that one. Yeah, it did look good, didn't it? I did think, uh, mm. yeah, really good. It's good to see. Because I think, I can't remember, it was a long time ago when I reviewed it, but I, we, we, I think I liked it. I think it was a very good, 
uh, good game in that genre. Yeah, it's, it's like a turn-based strategy thing, um, and this looks very similar. Yeah. So since they've got such a good track record with the these kind of games i'm cautiously excited about that one shall we say? good good um i liked first of all um after us which is uh a kind of like really lovely kind of little fantasy platformer i think it was do you remember seeing that one paul i do yes yeah. i remember thinking this has got gareth written yeah. all over it kind of maybe a little limberly a bit of uh, ori and the wispy thing what's what, I don't know what that game's called <laughs> ori. ori and the wispy wisp <laughs> Ori and the Wisp, yeah. Willow the Wisp. <laughs> that one. Um, yeah, I like the look of that. I think that's coming out in May as well, at the end of in, um, May the 23rd or something like that. Yeah, I can remember. Mm-hmm. What about your other one, Paul? Which one? Um, the other one I like the look of, um, I've, I've mentioned this one before when uh, it was we saw it last year, uh, The Last Case of Benedict Fox. The, uh, the, it looks very Lovecrafty and it looks really good. And they showed us some of the combat this time. Um, and yeah, I, I'm still looking forward to this. I think it looks really good. It's going to be something different, I think. Yeah. Can I agree with you there? I think this could be sleeper hit of the year. Mm-hmm. Mm, definitely. April the 27th, that's coming out. Looking forward to that. Yeah, it's not long. I think my last one's going to be The Expanse. Um, which is a new Telltale game that um, I like. I like. I like a Telltale game. Um, Everyone likes a Telltale game. Yeah, and this well, like an old school Telltale game. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame it's not The Wolf Among Us too. But mm, no, that's not coming out till twenty twenty eight or something. Ooh, um, yeah, no, it's good. I mean, The Expanse is a series I've always wanted to watch, but I never had. I think it's all on Amazon at the moment. I watched maybe one episode, and it's, it's quite a, people love it. Those spacing, so yeah, I'd, it'd be great. It'd be I'd be interested to play that. Um, mm. But there wasn't that did that did look good. Yeah, yeah. I like the, what they were talking about, where they were saying it was like there's there's so many series of the TV series and about nine books as well mm. to draw on, and they were they were bringing everybody together to make this game. So. Yeah, it looks quite uh, impressive. Yeah. There's some nice stuff on there. I think um, Richard was going to be on here, a few things, like the Park game. Um, the Yeah, Park. Is it Beyond Park? Yeah, Park, Park Beyond. Beyond. Park Beyond. Yeah. yeah, that looks really good. And um, the little city kind of life sim kind of thing, mm. Go Go Town. That's right. Yeah. That looks really cute. Yeah. Um, that could be cool. No, good, good. Um, other news this week, and I was going to get your opinions on this. Um, Ubisoft, they came out this week and they said they're not going to be joining E3. Um, and they've also got their own event they're going to do, like Xbox have, like probably PlayStation would do something on their own at time, um, for June. Um, so the same week, I think, as E3 is meant to be. But they've pulled out. I think Sega have gone as well now. I think, um, is it Devolver, the publishing company? Is that what they're called? D- uh, digital Devolver. Yeah, I think Devolver got, Digital. Devolver Digital. digital. <laughs> One of the ways around. Yeah. They, they're doing their own thing. <laughs> Is E3 finished now? Is that it? Neil? Um, I think we've spoken about this before, and at the time I said yes in the way E3 was, so before pandemic. Um, it's obvious that may- maybe they're charging too much for these companies to go there. I don't know. Or maybe these companies have just realised that they can do their own thing and they can do it in the same week. They don't need to get involved with E3. Just just do that. It's, it's simpler, isn't it? Mm. It's, it's, it's the way to do it. Why, why have this big kind of E3 umbrella sitting over you when you can just go and do your own thing when you want and do what you want? It, Paul, what do you think? I mean, it's about... It's about people as well, isn't it? Turning up to yeah, this place and walking around and all that stuff. Is are, are we are we still are we at the end I of that stuff? We, I don't know. I think it it's going to be something that would be missed. I think if you know you couldn't go to these things, especially now that we're out of the pandemic and everybody's all great again. I think it's it'll be a shame, but the way things are going, I can't see how it can continue. You know, you'd have like one indie developer and his cat there. And it's just, yeah, I don't think it's going to work. If the big boys are staying away, then, you know, there the, the literally isn't any point, is there? Can, can I just jump in there and say, 
I always remember people moaning that E3 was a nightmare anyway. There were too many people there. Hotels flew through the through the roof in prices. People couldn't didn't have anywhere to stay. Queues were horrendous. Um, is it really a bad thing that that's not the case anymore? Well, mm, I don't know. Because I, I know mean, I, I've been to EGX a good few times yep. um, before the pandemic, and then it was slowly dying off. It was never as busy as it was back in, I don't know, maybe seven or eight years ago. It was like kind of peak gaming, and it was a, it, it was a bit of a nightmare, to be honest. The queues were horrendous. People were queuing two and a half hours to play a game they can play the next day. First of all, I don't understand why they're doing that. Um, but the queues were too long. And then you go in the recent years, and I know Rich, Richard went a couple of years back, was it? And did we go last year or the year before? Mm, no, I don't, yeah. And, and it was it was just so much more quiet. It was it was kind of just a bit more relaxing. Mm. Um, yes, there were the devs. There were some devs that didn't bother turning up. But the ones that were there had more of your kind of attention. That's quite a good thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's also, is it about, you know, there's a whole kind of, what I always love about going to those things is seeing kind of like young people dressing up. And there's a thing that they all like doing that and dressing up the cosplayers and that kind of like, you know, it's their kind of like this big day out, isn't it? For a lot of people, a lot of comic book fans for EGX as well as game fans. And that's, I'd be ashamed for that to go. For that, I mean, for us, it's different, isn't it? Because we're going there to see some games and do the because we're old. Is that we're what old, yeah. yeah. We're not hanging around. Yeah, yeah. I, I did have a girl once. She was dressed up in full cosplay. She said, "Do you like my outfit?" I said, "Yeah," but I don't know who you are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she walked off the opposite direction. Oh, yeah. yeah. So well, what I want yeah. to know is what Gareth went dressed up as. Um, middle-aged man. With yeah. alco- <laughs> mild to medium alcoholic problems. You've been playing that role for a while. Yeah, man. I have, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and I mean, we're not going to go dressed as Pikachu. Um, so it's, it's, but yeah, I think I think that would be a shame. But maybe there'd be smaller things, maybe that smaller events might happen rather than huge ones. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you're right about, you know, for journalists and people coming in to see it, it's a, that's an expense they don't want. Also, that's what the, the companies are doing i think why we spent all this money i'd be interested to see how much xbox or ubisoft would spend on egx you know what's that figure yeah Uh, talking egx xbox never turned up anyway they were terrible with it over here london was terrible shown by them i always remember playstation would take the place over basically Mm. Mm. playstation ubisoft activision um, and then there'd be like a little game pass booth in in one corner and Mm -hmm. that's like the xbox bit and think oh that's a little bit sad yeah um but yeah that uh, generally they're all going to be saving money i would think yeah and that's the main thing at the moment yeah um good well we'll see i, th- I think it's probably going to go isn't it i can't imagine because it's just so much money to hire that whole area they've got you know maybe they just hire the car park a few little kind of there like we go. hot dog that's stand that's all yeah a little yeah. marquee be yeah fine. be Perfect. fine yeah um there's not a lot of news at the moment, is there? Um, we've got... Oh, I saw it. There's a... Did you see the Final Fantasy 16? And this is when Reed Richard was going. He would have been loving this. Um, but you two are not going to like this. Final Fantasy 16 has got a new trailer. Have you both had a look at this? I did see it, yeah. Um, but because it's PlayStation <laughs> only, I'm, I'm, I'm refusing to look at it anymore. Um, <laughs> is it PS5 understand. only as well? Or? I'm not sure. I think it might be, you know. Yeah, probably. But I mean, I don't know why Square are thinking that the best way to make money is to make a game about NFTs when they could just release their games on the Xbox. I mean, it's a a radical plan, like doubling your target audience. But, you know, I am available for uh, marketing and stuff if they need me. So, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, I don't don't want to know about Final Fantasy until they bring it back on the Xbox. Neil, did you ever look at this? No, I don't right. care about Final no, Fantasy. It's good. One little bit. Again, I'll I'll go back to the old Resi thing. I played Final Fantasy Seven back in the day, and that's it. Good. It's one of the greatest games of all time. Oh yeah, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. 
but um, yeah. I wasn't that excited about this game for a long time, and then I looked at the. I like the world. I like the sort of trailer. Just it's a trailer that just shows the kind of the worlds it's going to be, and it's a visual trailer rather than a story or anything. So I thought, oh, that does look good. That does look very impressive. These places. So yeah, I think I'll probably it's June. It's coming out, isn't it? I'll get this I, I think you liked it so much because the trailer only showed a fella walking about. Yeah. And I think in your head, you think it's a walking simulator. I do. Yeah, I'm hoping it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no fighting. And talking about people walking about, now there's another one for Richard Benpool as well. I think he's, he's got a Switch. he has got a Switch as well. The Zelda um, game um, got announced and Tears of the Kingdom, the next um, Zelda game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um have you played the the first one, you two? No, but I've watched my son play it a ah, lot. Is he excited. Yeah. I'm sticking my hand up as well. I, well, I haven't watched Paul's son play it. I don't sit in his window. I was going to say, that's <laughs> looking for his bedroom window <laughs> <laughs> on that scissor list that he's got in the garden. I don't do that, but um, <laughs> I watched my daughter play it, yeah. Is she excited? Is your son excited for it? The boy's excited. He's been saving his pocket money to buy it when it comes out. Um, so I can't believe yeah, you're not buying it for him. Listen, I'm not made of money. Oh, oh right. I mean, it's going to be a big seller, isn't it? It's, you know, that's going to be everyone's waiting for this game. It's like one of the mm-hmm. biggest games of the year. Um, one day they've, like they've even play. brought out a new switch, haven't they? For uh, a, a new, a new version of the OLED switch. Tell us about um, this because I've got no idea anything about the switch. Well, they've, they've, it's just like a special edition. Um, it's still a plain old switch. Um, but it's got all the uh, Tears of the Kingdom um, graphics and stuff on it. I mean, it's great and all, but maybe Nintendo should be looking at making a new Switch that's a bit more up to date. Mm. A bit controversial, I know, but uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, it's like just like the special edition ones they do that are a slightly different colour and with some scribbling on the outside. I think there's going to be an Xbox special. <laughs> I think I might have read today for Diablo. In June, Xbox special Ooh, edition. I'm looking forward to that. Um, maybe I made that up. Um, well, it's good. I think you probably did. But yep. Diablo Four is going to be amazing. Okay, good. Um, I'll just, I'll so just get a red pen and draw all over it. <laughs> the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Exactly well, that's the same. very true. Yeah. 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 Um, sad news. Um, Atlas Fallen has been delayed. Um, it's now not going to come out in May. It's going to come out in August, I think. Um, I don't know when in August. Maybe it's got a date. I think. Know, just check that yeah, August the 10th um, that's not too bad a no it isn't I think, no, it's a good, I think it's a good thing you've got some big games coming out in June you've got Red 4 in, in May and a couple of other biggies not, yeah. not, so yeah, I think it's good so you mean release it just ahead of Starfield is that what you that's saying? better yeah. Yeah. yeah a month before <laughs> yeah. play this for a month then <laughs> yeah it's yeah. off yeah exactly um and I'm going to just talk to you about this little story that came out. I heard this story on TalkSport, first of all, and I thought, oh, maybe we should talk about this. There's been this kind of report about, and it's it's good that you've got you two on, because you two have got kids. And it's about this story that comes out about um, children and or young children are being treated for game addiction on the NHS. And I got a report here from the Scottish Sun that has nine, nine things that you know your son. So basically, they're talking about stories about... Um, Certain teams said they'd rather be dead than not play the game, and they're attacking oh, their parents and restricting them. And it talks about all these things. Do you now both parents? Do you think is is this a problem? Is this a problem that you're aware of? Me? Do is there more? I'm going to ask Paul first of all. Do you do you limit your time the kid out, or do you just is it a freedom there, or what do you think? Um, he can pretty much play as much as he wants. We don't restrict his time. Um, I remember reading somewhere that kids should have a sort of an hour before bed where they're not looking at a screen sort of thing. So we enforce that an hour before he goes to bed. He has to turn it all off. Um, But what we also do is he has a corner of the living room where he's got all his gear set up. We don't let him have it in his bedroom because he'd be playing it all night. Um, So... Yeah, I mean, I can see that I read the article that you linked us to. Mm. And yeah, I mean, I haven't had any of those things happen here. But he would be quite happy to sit there on his backside all day playing video games Mm. if he could. 
Mm. Um, quite often we have to sort of shoo on him out of the house and say, no, you're going outside and moving about. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's difficult for me because he sees me playing games a lot because obviously I've got to play all these ones for review, so I can't really get too up on my sort of moral high horse. But, uh, yeah, we try and keep an eye on the situation. Okay. What about you, Neil? What's your thoughts on it? I, I kind of agree totally with what Paul said, to be honest. Um, yeah, they, they've they been brought out. One of them's 20, so I'm not going to tell him what to do. The other one's 14. She's kind of quite easy. She just gets on with it, and she knows when it needs to be switched off and and doesn't really kind of take the piss too much. But, yeah, they, they brought up, they've been brought up around video games. I've got friends whose kids haven't been brought up around video games. And they say, oh, well, why are your kids playing games? Well, that's just what they do. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's just the way it is. Um, I can understand the whole the whole addiction thing. Um, luckily, touch wood, I've never had that issue here. But, um, yeah, no, I, I kind of, yeah, I very much agree with Paul. I'm looking for the nine signs of gaming addiction here. I think I've got them all. You probably yeah. have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was worried that you linked me to the Scottish Sun, but <laughs> I was trying to do. I was, I was trying to get you linked to the Times, but I can't do that. You have to pay for that. So this is the next one. It's the same thing. Um, yeah. Nobody's going to pay for the Scottish Sun. So we're no. all right. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I've got the nine. Uh, have a look. If you have a go, maybe you have a look. Look at the thing. Look at the nine gaming addictions things, and yeah. Well, I mean, I Would got... you rather be dead than not be able to play video games, Gary? No, I think I'm there. But well, there you go. You're there's... all right then. Well, there is um, continue to gain despite problems, and you're thinking, well, sometimes it's, you want to gain to get rid of the problems. Yeah, well, exactly. yeah. I, d- I don't see that as being a no. problem as such. No. Really, that sounds that, that's like... just taking your mind off of it. Isn't exactly, it? and that sounds like someone who doesn't play games has done that one because. Also, some gamers, especially young games, will say it's helped them through, you know, mental health problems. Some people have talked about it being, you know, having commu- communities yeah. help them through lockdown, which was the biggest thing. So they could talk with their friends and they could have that chat. So, yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's always a, a generational thing, isn't it? You know, my grandparents would be shocked by the amount of games that I was playing. And then I'm shocked at the games that kids nowadays are playing etc that's just the way it is that, that is life if, yeah, unless exactly. they want to get down the mines again then fair enough but they're not are they no no exactly <laughs> no although in, in an interesting twist on that the first person to buy a sort of um modernish console in our family was my granddad when he went out and bought a sega mega drive to play arnold palmer's golf <laughs> I, I like your family, Paul. It's great. Yeah, my, my I do dad, like them. My dad, does, yeah, he's still got his um, his his Series S, and he still plays games on it. So, yeah, it's great. <laughs> Have you bought more VR yet? No, no, yeah, I, I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not a believer in VR. I don't think it's going to catch on. <laughs> <laughs> I am a VR denier. <laughs> you haven't said that before. <laughs> <Pretty certain. laughs> Um, all right, gentlemen, that's it for this week. That's all, that's all we've got. What about that? Um, what are you looking forward to next week? Uh, Neil? Um, oh, can Paul go first? And I'll just yeah, go on. Back Paul, what have you got? Oh, flipping out. Well, um, Paul, say, say Rally Adventure, Forza Horizon 5, Paul, say it. Well, I'm not looking forward to that next week. I'm looking forward to it when I finish talking to you two idiots. I'm uh-huh. going to and turn the Xbox on. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, Forza Horizon 5, the new expansion, the Rally Adventure, is launching today. I think it's it launched 11 minutes ago, looking at the clock, because um, it wasn't until sort of 6 p.m. our time. Um, so I'm quite looking forward to that. Hard time. Did you? Mm. Oh, I've got time to go to the chippy then. In that case, that'll be you all. Have. Right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Really like grease over your controller. Oh, Brilliant. that garlic mayo everywhere. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And because I worked on Saturday, the HR is forcing me to have Friday off. So I'm going to go fishing on Friday. I'm looking forward to that. Brilliant. Okay, so you'll be playing that tonight, both of you. Yes. I'm going to play that today, maybe. Well, maybe not tonight. No, I won't be playing it tonight. I'll play it tomorrow. Okay. You need to play it tonight, Neil. You need to come online for once. Sorry. And come and play. I remember Sorry. the days Life. that we used to play Forza Horizon 5 together. 
and then I managed to get half an hour out of you on my 50th birthday. Hey, was Gareth there? No, he wasn't. He's on his goal there. <laughs> he, ne- he never kept up anyway. He was too busy looking in the shop windows. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Can I can I also say I'm looking forward to Dredge. So, to oh yeah, the 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 weird fishing game from Team Seventeen. Is that right? Yeah. So um yeah, looking forward to that. Good, mm. good. Um, I. I'm going to look forward to going on the first aid course, which I'm not looking forward to, but I've got to do a first aid course because of the work I do. <laughs> and I've got to do that next week. And the paperwork is about four hours of work and I'm putting that off. But yeah, that's my, that's my awesome. week next week. Can I, uh, can I set you a challenge? Go on. I had to do a first aid course at work a little while ago and I scored 100% in the final exam. You've got to try and beat that. All right, I'll fail it. I'll set the place on fire. That'd be what Game happened. on. <laughs> Um, right, gentlemen, if we need to find you, where do we find you, Paul? Um, if you want to grab my handle, it's uh, on the Twitter at Xbox Hub Paul. And Neil, where can we find you? Uh, Instagram, if you must, uh, Neil363. And you can find me at GB Brian on Twitter and Twitch. But for now, we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye. Goodbye. You've been listening to the official podcast of the XboxHub.com. You had found all the notes of the show at www.thexboxhub.com slash podcast. You can also check out our social feeds on Instagram and Twitter at the Xbox Hub and search for the Xbox Hub on Facebook.